Smash Strong? Game developers in the early to mid 90s had a revelation. Kids that grew up with the NES are now teenagers, and what do teenagers like? Violence, blood, gore, and punches to the groin. So here came Mortal Kombat at the forefront of a new era in gaming. Man, when this game hit arcades in 1992, it was an event. I remember my friends and I walking to the bowling alley and there'd be a huge crowd standing around Mortal Kombat. I was a 10 year old at the time, and this game was just beyond belief. I couldn't believe I was actually seeing this stuff, let alone imagine how somebody could come up with some of these moves. So Mortal Kombat was what was seen at the time as a natural progression of the fighting genre. Street Fighter 2 took their franchise in a direction where the games were predicated on speed and precision. Mortal Kombat went in a different, gaudier direction. But how has that gaudy direction held up over time? Are the Mortal Kombat games worth playing today? In a word, no. These games are incredibly dated that very clearly relied on shock value to get attention from mainstream media and to play to a male teenager's base sensibilities and instincts. Sure, there were a lot of games that did that then, like Doom, but that game is still perfectly playable with smooth and responsive controls. Mortal Kombat is just bad, especially on Super Nintendo. Give Sega credit, they had the best port of the first game by far, and not just because it had blood, and the SNES version didn't, it was better looking, it played fluidly. And since the controller had less buttons, it actually made the finisher combos a lot more straightforward. The Super Nintendo version blended in with every other generic fighter not named Street Fighter 2. It wasn't until Mortal Kombat 2 came out that the SNES surged ahead. That game at the time was everything you wanted out of a Mortal Kombat game, tons of personality with a detailed backstory that I ate up with a spoon. A lot more characters, a lot more settings, some interactive, which I admit is still pretty cool to this day. A lot more finishers, babalities, and friendship, friendship. And of course, you gotta love the announcer. Victory. And of course, this guy. My biggest problem with this game though is that every character might as well be the same person. Everyone's basic moves are literally exactly the same, the only difference is being their looks and a few special moves. At least with Street Fighter 2 you had characters of different sizes, different speeds, different range of motion, and all that combines to lend itself to a wide variety of gameplay that is aged really well. Mortal Kombat 2, almost everyone's the same size and speed, everyone's punches and kicks and uppercuts are the same, combine that with how stiff the controls are, and the completely lazy half-assed animation of the characters, and this game is just not worth playing today outside of entirely personal nostalgia, and even then, you're gonna play for like 5 minutes and then turn it off. Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3 expands the universe a bit more with even more characters and some more multiplayer friendly game modes. The graphics and character animations are mercifully polished up a bit, but the game is still really stiff, everyone moves and plays the same, and they stubbornly insisted on having a block button. I have to mention how stupid that is, I mean, why can't you just have a block be the back button that's automatically triggered when you press back while the enemy is attacking? Again, Street Fighter 2 nailed this aspect, but it's among my biggest pet peeves of the Mortal Kombat series. Like I said before though, I do like how fully realized this game's universe is. You really do enter another world when you play these games. Playing a Mortal Kombat game is a little bit like watching a cheesy 80s action movie like Delta Force or Bloodsport or whatever. It's fun for a while, but you'll get your fill of it sooner rather than later. Anyway, I can't think of a game series that's gone downhill over time as badly as Mortal Kombat, except maybe Sonic, but at least the older Sonic games were really good. Again, if you still like it for nostalgic reasons, obviously there's nothing wrong with that. Just don't expect any actual substance in the gameplay here, even if you decide to check it out out of pure nostalgia. After 10 minutes or so, you're likely to be wobbling around like Liu Kang here. I'd much rather play Street Fighter 2 Turbo.